Josh Green here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by my good friend and top trainer, Tunde Ajayi. How are you, my friend? A long time, no speak. <laughs> yeah, in the shadows. What's that film? The Batman film. I was born in the... <laughs> I was molded by the... Well, I'm in the shadows. <laughs> but good to see you, Josh. New nickname, The Dark Knight, yeah? Oh, I don't know about that, but um, Tunde Ajayi sounds good to me. Top man. Look, uh, Joel Kadoa out on Saturday night. Huge opportunity for him up in Barnsley. Stadium show, Sky Sports. This is a big opportunity. And if he takes it, look at the doors it could open. Yeah, you know, I've always said, you reap what you sow. You know, he's not here by magic. You know, Joel, as I said from the very beginning, is a tremendous worker that I'm happy and privileged to work with because otherwise it wouldn't be. Um, and I just feel that Saturday night is a culmination of the work that he's done previously. And uh, here we go, Saturday night. Uh, picking this back up with Sunday Ajay, we're talking about Joel's progression in his career, what this opportunity means to him. Yeah, and I, I said, you know, um, it's a fantastic opportunity, one which I feel that he's worked for. Um, as the saying goes, hard work, dedication. But everything he's done, as I said, again, uh, up until this point is what's got him here so if he wants more of these nights more of these occasions he has to continue working hard and for those that don't know him what are we, can we expect to see on Saturday night from Joel well another win <laughs> that's the most important thing and uh, another step forward to where I know he's going to be uh, which inevitably is, is a champion but it's a long road and uh, again, I say it, that's why I don't really like to over put or over build fires in the embryonic stage of their career. But he, he's going to do very well because he works tremendously hard. Behind closed doors, what have you seen from Joel that makes you believe that he's going to be a top star in the sport, really going to achieve his potential? It's, my father used to say to me, son, it's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. Uh, if you put in five hours and I put in ten hours, the likelihood is I'm going to win. Um, obviously, you have to take natural talent and, and everything into consideration, but the way Joe works, for me, is a great indication where I feel he's going to be. I believe he's been sparring Anthony Yard in the lead up to this fight. That can only do him good being in there with a world-level operator like Anthony. Yeah, and listen, Anthony's like the, the daddy for the camp. You know, so for, remember, I think t tomorrow's fight is made at something like 151. Uh, Joe's a waterway, you know, and uh, anyone who's sparred with Anthony will tell you it's, it's not easy to be in the ring with him, you know, but uh, Anthony, Anthony schools him and shows him, you know, the ropes. Um, but Joe gives as good as they get, but he's a small man, so obviously there has to be a lot of um, uh, diligence. Uh, when both of them are sparring, but um, I, I just feel like you can't. He, Joe cannot get any better sparring uh, than Anthony. Young. Talking about Anthony, what is the current situation with him? Has he been in camp? Is he at the moment looking for a fight? Or? No comment, Your Honor. <laughs> no comment, Your Honor. Uh, Ant's always training. Ant's always training, and um, when the time is 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 the time then um they'll be, you know we'll talk about it but right now i don't want to take the shine off of joe tomorrow night belongs to joe kadua and for me that's the most important thing i don't want to ask specifically about sort of the links and the, the stories surrounding anthony and frank Warren, but it must be a, a frustrating period for you as a trainer and for him as a fighter to not be in the active and be in these fights no it's not frustrating because we're, we're, we're working every day we're getting better every day and inevitably Regardless of what goes on uh, behind closed doors, the most important thing for the fighter is him training and him staying in shape and him being ready. And for me as well, as a trainer, that's him. But all the rest of the stuff is neither here nor there. It's not going to stop us from doing what we've done from the very beginning of Anthony's career. And that's train his ass off. <laughs> How close was the Joshua Watsi fight for Wembley? I don't know. Is that a good answer? Is that a good answer? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. 
It may still happen. It may still happen. Um, what do you believe are the biggest fights out there, front? Andy uh, has probably one of the... Oh, he has a multitude of options. There is no one fighter. Anthony Yard's career is not predicated on one fighter. There's, I mean, there better be a rematch. There's Kovalev, I don't know. I think he, it'd be good. It'd be good to get his uh, revenge. There's a Kovalev. Uh, there's the Callum Smith fight, which we were ready to fight. We were ready to take that fight in September. Um, there's Chris Billum Smith up at Cruiserweight. Uh, this week I saw online David Benavides. Um, and these are fighters that's calling out Anthony's name. Um, Andre Giroux, you saw he Instagram. You, you don't hear no American fighters talking about any British light heavyweight other than Anthony Yard. No prominent fighters anyway. You know, because uh, Anthony's options are, they're just, there's so many of them. And um, as I said, Anthony Yard's career is not predicated on one fight. You mentioned after Baterbiev's name there. Obviously, we've got the new date for Baterbiev versus Bivol. Uh, from your sort of understanding and your expertise, how does that fight play out? Very, very interesting fight. Very interesting fight. I think um, in the past, what makes it more interesting is that it's two Russian-based fight fighters. And I, I, I was saying to someone the other day, I'm trying to scratch my head when you've seen two Russian-based fighters at the top level both fighting for belts. I, I, I think it's almost unheard of. I mean, um, I haven't heard of it. But what I do know is Dimitri Bivol has tremendous skill, speed, uh, stamina. Uh, but Arthur, I just feel that the mental pressure of Arthur Betebiev is, is going to be tough for anyone. Plus the fact that he's a very, very hard puncher. We saw over the last weekend, Derek Chisora and Joe Joyce, you know, there's some war, some Still fight, but there's a lot of talk about where they are in their careers and what should be next for them. Retirement being obviously an option that has to be at the top of the table. What would your advice be to those two fighters for what their next steps are? Well, I haven't really got any advice for them other than take care of yourselves. You know, um, they say boxing can be a very unforgiving sport. Uh, fighters uh, are usually the first to know when they should retire, but usually the last to retire. So I think that given the fact that Derek has come back with a win, I think it'll be a good way to, you know, good way to ride off into the sun sunset. It's, that's a massive, it was, a, it was such an incredible victory. I think that maybe, you know, may, maybe it's, it, it's, it's a good way to sign off. Where Joe Joyce is concerned, I don't know. Listen, it, it's difficult. It's easy for us on the outside to say that a fighter should retire. But well, as I say, please, you know, these days, you're talking about people that love what they do. Um, so I, but I if they've got good people around them, family friends, business advisors, and I think they'll give them the best advice. Would there be any concerns about the people around them, people giving them the wrong advice to continue fighting and maybe that coming from the wrong place to continue in their careers? Well, I don't think there's many people that can tell Derek Chisora what to do anyway in the, in the first place. But look, we're fans. You know, we want to see a tear up. Um, we're going to see on Saturday. When yeah, guys are at the latter stages of their careers, you don't want to really see them take unnecessary punches. Because, you know, ultimately, um, it's the cumulative effect. And we see the effects of careers after the fighters have retired. Maybe three, four, five years after. I mean, look at James Tony. Uh, it's very sad, you know. And, uh, we don't want fighters to go on for too long. But, listen, it's boxing. Um, Anthony Joshua, since the last time I spoke to you, we've got the Daniel Dubois fight. We've seen what happened in their initial sort of press conference and face-off. What do you read into that in terms of the mindset for both Anthony and Daniel Dubois? Well, you've got the experienced um, right campaigner along, as we uh, against for this night at uh, the young Warhols. 
you know, um, Ali Joshua's, I think, maybe had something like 13 world title fights. That's a lot of experience. That is a lot of experience. But having said that, Daniel has been fighting top fighters uh, in Jojo, in Alexander Usyk, um, and he's still only 26 years young. So, who knows? The young, sprightly energy against the seasoned, cam more experienced campaigner. It's a great fight and uh, one which my eyes are going to be true, peeled to. How do you see that one playing out on September 21st? Tune into the fight is right every Sunday, 8 p.m. with Spencer Fira and Tunde Ajayi. Nah, um... Here <laughs> you go. Little plug, plug. I don't know. You know what? My, uh, when... Daniel won the last fight. I said Daniel's gonna stop aging. But that feeling only lasted for two weeks. <laughs> that feeling, because I like the energy that Anthony Joshua is coming with. I do like it. It's an um it, it's a good energy. I think his confidence is sky high. As is Daniel the Bar. Um but as of now, I'm going with Anthony Joshua by stoppage. Final thing from me, uh, Tyson Fury and his team have made it quite um, confirmed now, quite solid that he will be sticking with the corner that took him through that first fight against Alexander Rusik. Yes. Um, how do you sort of view that decision going into the rematch? Excellent decision. Excellent. You know, and I think, again, it's, it's credit to Tyson Fury. Um, that someone who has achieved so much in this sport, um, after one hiccup, one hiccup has not decided to ditch the team which is instrumental, including his father, in getting him to where he got. And I think that, as I've always said, people have to, there's only so long you can blame others, you know, until you put the blame on yourself and like, what did I do wrong? Uh, have I got the right team around me to help me achieve uh, or put in place of what went wrong. And I think that Tyson Fury is doing a, a good thing. I think he's going to come back way stronger in a rematch because uh, he knows what to do. He's been in there uh, with Alexander once already. Cheers for your time, as always, today. They seem to have just dimmed the music as we're finishing off. So they obviously know something we don't. Uh, we probably won't even put this out because of the music. <laughs> I uh, appreciate the time done there and I'll speak to you again soon. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for the interview, Josh.